Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out in the PC Mag labs. Today's cool thing is something that I use. It's something that most of the people around you use. It's something that if you are not using it, you should be using it. It is Windows 10. And now you think, Windows 10, that came out two years ago. That's certainly what I thought half an hour before, uh, half an hour ago before starting this show. And before Michael Muchmore told me what is really going on here, which is that that thing that was coming down to my Windows 10 computer that I thought was a monthly security update turns out to be full of new features. Right, twice a year Microsoft re releases feature updates. They, they, re they release security and stability updates all the time. Um, and sometimes they'll slip in a little feature, like, like I saw new, new capabilities in the Photos app, like in the middle of... So it's usually in... This year it was April and October um, that you got the big releases. Um, and you want to hear about what was big? Yeah, absolutely. The feature wise. Okay. So we've got Windows 10 here, and now is this running the October update? This is running the October update. Um, but let's talk a little, since we haven't um, talked about the April updates yet. The okay. big one for that was this timeline. So if you look down right next to the search bar, you hit this time. It's task view. That appears to be the task view. Right. And they've combined the task view. I can have multiple desktops here, mm -hmm. up here. But below that is, is my previous activities. Um, you know, this is stuff I was working on, and it's mm -hmm. and for now it's 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 modern apps. It's Windows Store apps. It's so Edge oh. browser, Win Word, you know, Office works in it. Um, I have Firefox and Chrome have plugins where you can get you know your browsing history to mm -hmm. show up in these. But the cool thing about this too is you have search, which um, which is one of my complaints about Edge. There's no history search in it. There's history, plenty of history, but no history search. So if you need to search, um, but of course this is not just the browser. This is this is um, also Office primarily, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because yeah, is, is Office really the only other Microsoft Store application that everyone uses? <laughs> um, I don't know if it's even technically, I guess it is a Microsoft Store application, but it uh -huh. feels like a bigger app than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, well, OneNote, I, I think OneNote is it's pretty popular. Yeah, it's part I guess. of Office. Uh, That's okay. the thing. Okay. Yeah, there are a bunch of... Do people use any Microsoft? There are little things. Okay, there are things like Hulu. There are things like okay. Netflix that... Um, and I use WhatsApp. And so, like, the um, things... Will the things that you were watching on Hulu and Netflix come up in this timeline? They should, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you should... Um, you should be able to, and you can also get it too if you have a touch screen just by swiping there. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay, that was the big thing um, the last time around. But right. last week, um, when Microsoft launched all the new Surface Pros and Surface Laptops um, uh, and the Surface Studio, mm -hmm. the big one, um, they also announced, oh, hey, we ha we've released this update to Windows as well. And now the major feature in that update was that it deletes your My Documents directory, <laughs> right? There have been like a handful of people, and there are always these complainers. Whenever Windows, whenever Microsoft does a Windows update, there's a group of people that are there that are just like, no, no, don't do it. Go back, go back. But dude, ten it, million people beta tested this. I, ten million, and there were multiple, multiple, multiple installs, like more than one a week, when you're a beta tester. Ten million of them, less than. One hundredth of one percent in like the first day com had this complaint. Yeah, but so if, if your my documents directory Microsoft, went away, wouldn't you freak right, out? Of course. Yeah. And Microsoft took it very seriously. I don't take it seriously, but Microsoft took it very seriously <laughs> because they stopped the rollout. Um, mm -hmm. They did a fix. They looked in. They investigated everything, and now they've re. Now it's available again. Okay. Okay. Basically. So but I didn't see it on any of the machines. That so I'm. new features in this October update, which will keep your my documents directory intact. Okay. Well, the big feature in. Um, in this one is um, the phone connection. So there's an app called Your Phone. Um, and what you do is you go into settings, and the settings menu now has a phone. Um, are you showing the screen here? Um, yeah, it has this phone thing. So you can link. I have these linked phones. And so now you don't need, you don't need a Windows phone for this. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Uh, you know, I'm not even sure if it works with Windows phone. But um, it might. Um, but but Android, you, you kind of need Android for this. Mm -hmm. Like, like there's a little bit of, there's, there is integration with, with iOS. Um, for example, you can get the Edge browser, you can get Cortana, mm -hmm. um, and, and when you're an Edge browser in, in, an, in an iPhone, um, you, there's a button that just will, you click that and boom, it will open it on your computer, which is a fun thing. But with Android, 
you can actually see the photos and, the, and do text messaging from your PC, which is connected to the Android phone. So, so let's look at that. The app is called Your Phone. I thought I had it running, but here it is. Um, and here you can see, I've connected it to a Zen phone, an mm -hmm. As Asus Zen phone, which is a pretty nice phone, actually, I thought. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but you can see these pictures as I would snap pictures on the phone. I, I'm not, um, I've since relinquished that phone back to your team, so I don't have it hooked up now, but you can see the photos that, mm -hmm. that popped up. Um, these are from the phone. I can drag these into another app. Can I drag it to the desktop? I guess so, yeah, look at that. Um, but yeah, it, and it's instant. It's like you take a picture on your phone, boom, it's there. One thing that's not there is screenshots from the phone, which is, I wish it would happen. Now, now uh, can I use this as a file manager for my phone? Like with, a, for instance, with Samsung SideSync application, um, you can use your PC to, you know, upload and download arbitrary files from the phone. No, this is really, at this point, it's just, um, I mean, you, you can um, connect a phone. You can see the files on an Android, on a PC. Just, I mean, you could plug it in the USB. You to, yeah, that, yeah right? you have to yeah. plug it into USB yeah. and use MTP. Um, yeah. But I'm not going to show this. Th this is about the photos and the messages, which this is SMS messages, which is pretty cool. I'm not going to show it because there are phone numbers of mm -hmm. real people mm -hmm. in it. But let, just trust me and read the review. Um, you can see I have a blurred out phone numbers. Um, mm -hmm. You can actually do SMS texting from your PC and it will show up on your Android and the person that you're talking to. One caveat with that is, it didn't work well with iPhones. If you're, if you're texting an iPhone, it thinks it's iMessage. Right, iMessage just destroys everything. And iMessage yeah. destroys at least that. Now, um, <laughs> now, we will get to questions after we've done some more of these new features. So we'll let the questions build up a little bit. So I'm looking at your notes there, and I have to say, I looked at your notes there, and I saw the next one, and I was very excited because I thought it said dank mode. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's dark mode. and. Um, I'm in dark mode. I love dark mode because my eyes are kind of sensitive to light. I don't like bright lights like this. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> are you from the mirror universe? <laughs> Could be. Okay. Um, so let's see. Is Did dark... anyone get that joke? I didn't. Okay. It's a, it's a Star Trek so discovery color joke. So color settings. Um, you can go in here mm -hmm. um, and it's down here, light and dark mode. So, so you get the old standard windows look mm -hmm. here. It still uses Fluent Design. See the, see the transparency behind yep, the yep. window and stuff like that? But um, so dark mode was not as consistently applied as it is in Mojave. Mm -hmm. Like Mojave, it's basically in every system window. But you'll, in Windows 10, they've rolled it out a little slowlier. It's, mm -hmm. it's really in most things that end users will use. It's still not in things like device um, manager. Okay. Um, you know, like IT kind of things still use the old like Windows XP look. Yeah, they, design. yeah they, look like, they look like things from like 1998. But you know, to me, I, people disagree with me, but I feel like when I'm in that style of window, I know, oh, I'm in something very techy here. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. doing a normal thing. So, except for the uninstall, when you, when you uninstall like the traditional Windows programs, you get one of those, uh, the old control panel. But anyway, so there's light and dark mode. Um, new for this October update for dark mode is um, that it now applies to um, the Explorer. Ah. So, this is dark too. Dark Explorer. Yeah. These are things that I've downloaded and whatnot. Um, anyway, so yeah, dark mode. Um, other new big feature is mm -hmm. cloud clipboard, which is pretty cool. Where is this cloud? Which cloud is it clipping to? <laughs> so uh, let's go back to these documents and say I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this. Mm -hmm. Copy. Now what you can do is. Um, where can I paste this? To another folder. Let's see the screenshots. So if I go Windows key V, now see I get this clipboard here and I can see my all my last... It's a multi-item clip clipboard. It is, which is like, I don't know why this is not done 10 years ago. Because you, you cut and paste things and that's just one thing and you lose it. Finally, you can see previous things that you cut and paste. I think that was a Mac system extension like 25 years ago. Does, does Mac do that? No, I'm, I'm not. Does, Ma does, does Mac OS have a multi-item clipboard? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not know. sure. Okay, and kind of related to that is a new screen capture tool, um, which you, hit, you get to by Windows key, Shift, S, S for screenshot. And now, look at these choices. You can, you can do a non-rectangular capture, you can do full screen clip, 
or the traditional rectangle. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like what was in Mac, where you, you can select the area you want, and then you should... Where does the file That's go? That's a good question. Where did it go? <laughs> it was supposed to show up in this clip app. Oh, dear. <laughs> did it save it to your clipboard? Did it put it in the, in the screenshots folder? Um, did it... Where is the file? Yeah, it's supposed to pop up a little window that says, here, do all this stuff with it. And nope. It, and it didn't. Okay. Um, it's called like... S Snip and Cool, right? Yeah, but it's now called Snip and Sketch. Ah, so okay. Maybe it's here. <laughs> so let's try it this way. You can, you can use this app to do it. So mm -hmm. now let's snip here, and it should show me the correct... There it is. So, you, so yeah, I don't know, just now, of course, demo stuff. Right, like, right. This is the first time I've seen it not pull up this window. So here I can mark it up. I can crop it, I can share it, I can save it to a file. Mm -hmm. So much better screenshot. Tool. Okay, let's do one more feature and then we'll get to the questions. Okay, um, so those are really the biggest ones, but I just want to show you too that notice the search bar here has a new design where mm -hmm. you can clearly see, oh, what am I searching for? A document, an app, photo, and, web. And it's also trying to get you to use Cortana because a lot of people don't. Well, I mean this, Let's see, if I search PC Mag, see, you get um, interesting choices here, um, like open, open file mm -hmm. location. So you get a little more mm -hmm. options. This is local machine search and web search. Um, it's getting to use Bing. Right. <laughs> um, but, As we but, do but every day on this show. This is, this is not, I wouldn't call this Cortana, but, but this is considered part of Cortana. Because oh, I'm seeing this is Cortana. Down okay, here. put this on my calendar tomorrow. That is Cortana. Yeah. So, so this search box basically is owned by Cortana, mm -hmm. but but it also will just do a regular system search. Okay. Let's start taking some questions about Windows 10 and the new Windows 10 updates. What does it change about gaming, if anything? Oh, um, that's actually a good point. Um, there's a new game bar. Uh, when you hit um, when you hit Windows key G, you get this. Um, let me get rid of this other black background. Um, you get the Windows Game Bar, which lets you record your gaming. Um, it lets you, new for that is, is these audio controls, and, and it lets you go into game mode, which, is, which means you won't be distracted by other notifications mm -hmm. or other, mm -hmm. other things that try to interrupt your gaming. Um, it, game mode also puts system resources towards your game as opposed to any other background tasks. Okay, next question. Oh, wait, one more nope. gaming thing, though. It's cool. Um, ray tracing support. This is not really used by anything yet, but NVIDIA just came out with the 2080 cards mm -hmm. that have ray tracing, which will draw shadows very intelligently, and Windows 10, this update, supports that. Okay. Someone's asking about the bug that happened that was deleting people's files. What, right, what's the status on that? that. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean... A couple of people reported that, oh, I lost my, my documents when I did the update. As I say, 10 million people have tested this with many, many installs without seeing that. So now, now, uh, I it, didn't see it either. It's actually, it's actually a, good, a good point. Um, so I use a Surface Book at my desk all the time. I don't believe I've gotten this update. No, the, it's rolling out. And, and that's another thing Microsoft is being pretty careful about taking time to, to test the configurations before it will propose the update to you. Mm -hmm. So it, it it will start updating. Like on a Surface, I would think it would be up sooner because that's their hardware, basically. So, mm -hmm. But with so many different configurations of hardware and software, um, they want to roll it out slowly to make sure that your system can handle it. Okay. Next question. I don't know if you've heard about another sort of bug, which was someone that asks, does DirectX in this version still abandon true full screen gaming? Uh, I'm, I'm not the gaming person, to be honest. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I can't answer. You might want to ask Will about that or, or, um, or Jeff. Or Buzzy. Or Jeff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, or Buzzy. Okay, uh, any more questions? Oh, no. <laughs> when will Microsoft finally release an update that converts Windows into Linux? <laughs> okay. Actually, it is. They did. You can run Linux um, inside of, of Windows. As really? of, I think as of last, as a VM? As last year. I, th I think it's like a text mode Linux. Um, but like, so it, so it like, it like runs it as a VM? Because Linux is a different kernel. Um, 
I, I think mean, it's, I think it's um, like a modern there's container. A bunch, there's a bunch of shells, of course, that you can Let's run. See. Why don't I have the next? Um, yeah, I, I haven't, I don't do that. So I, I just know at Build they announced, and and they did put it in there. It's it's not like Ubuntu. It's not like beautiful Linux. Well, it's a it's a VM, right? Because it would have to be a VM. I guess so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think it yeah. runs in a modern app type of thing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, can I just show a couple of neat other things mm -hmm. before we get any more questions? Um, so we showed screenshot. We showed dark mode. We showed cloud clipboard. We showed your phone. We showed timeline. Um, there is, uh, and I showed the search new search thing. One really cool thing is you can hit Windows key H wherever you are in any text box and your keyboard will be your voice. So basically, if I'm in a text box, so let's see, maybe I can do it here. Uh, so you see the microphone at the top, it's listening. Now see how my words are going into the search bar like that, uh, 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 uh. which is kind of ridiculous. But, but anywhere you are, you can use this voice input, which, okay. which is really nice if you, if, you're, if you have repetitive stress motion or uh. whatever it's called, repetitive motion. Repetitive stress injury. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so that's sound dictation. And the other thing is over here in the action center, there's a feature called focus. Um, where is it? But you can't find it because you're not focused. I am in focus mode. No, that's rotation lock. Where is it? Not connected. Nearby sharing. Um, can you search for it using the uh, using the universal you search? Can. Oh wait, change focus assist up here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> change focus. But there's a, there's a button mm -hmm. for it too. But but sometimes um, it doesn't. Um, it may have to do with uh, the fact that you're projecting to a secondary display right now. Maybe, yeah. or maybe I just turned the button off. This is a customizable group of buttons mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But basically, Focus Assist lets you turn off notifications, mm -hmm. and um, but you can break through. You can specify people you want to break through. Okay, that's Focus Assist. And one thing that I think is cool that that Max got like ten mm -hmm. years ago is is called nearby sharing. So so say I'm in a photo. Let's let's open a photo. Um, here's photos. So I'm in this beautiful screenshot. Okay, find your favorites. This they're always updating these photos, by the way, which also now edits video and pretty in, pretty interesting stuff you can do with video. So let's see. Let's go into the picture. Now I want to share it. I hit share. So these are nearby share. These are machines, so I can send this photo to my bench machine over there. Immediately, and it, and it's and does it have pretty, to? Accept it's like it? airdrop. It's basically okay, airdrop. Okay. Um, let's take another question. Uh, we have another person asking why don't more apps have deep Cortana integration? Um, there are a, there are actually a few. You can see all of Cortana's um, capabilities in her notebook here. Um, so manage skills. Um, I have Cookie Frog sound if I want to call her. Um, wait, I don't want to just mm -hmm. talk about the frogs, but um, but there there's music. Um, I use it with TuneIn Radio. I use it with Spotify, um, and of course she can do search, family. So so we're going through here all the um, the skills. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the question is why don't why. Uh, can't you access more features of more third-party Windows apps using Cortana? It's just up to the developers of those apps. Um, so here, here's a bunch of uh, Cortana I think, skills. I think the difference, so I think getting, getting to the real question here, the difference is really between Apple's and Microsoft's uh, uh, attitude towards developers. Apple really pushes its latest features on developers and pushes hard to make sure that developers integrate the latest features of its operating systems. Um, very often you'll find that, uh, especially with iOS developers, um, Apple will start, kicking, uh, will start kicking applications out of the store if they don't support Apple's latest features. Microsoft takes a very much more hands-off approach to developers and a much more hands-off approach to 
um, legacy applications and applications which use legacy APIs. But the result is that Microsoft doesn't push as hard to get third-party developers to integrate things like Cortana or, for instance, to get third-party developers to use modern design in general. Yeah, hopefully like with, with, with the uptake of Surface devices, um, developers will say, oh, it makes sense for me to have more um, capabilities right. in a modern app. A, like, lot of, a lot of Windows developers just continue to, f a lot of Windows developers have uh, a lot of legacy code and they just continue to follow the path of least resistance, which means not adding these latest design changes right. or latest features of the operating system. And when I go to these conferences, it's like they've got pretty to good tools to make it pretty easy to go from a legacy app to mm -hmm. a modern app. Mm -hmm. and, and you're just getting more security, you're getting you're getting rid of the registry, hopefully. I mean, uh, that'd be nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's take another question. Okay. So at Build uh, it was this summer, they talked about Alexa and Cortana integration. Oh, actually, that's pretty interesting. Um, I, I actually just noticed this when I go to this Cortana button. Now, notice this used to just be for the the Harman Kardon Invoke, but. Now you can add Alexa devices to talk to Cortana, and there it is. And, and this is great because uh, Cortana as, honestly, Cortana as a uh, voice assistant in home devices has completely failed. Uh, no one is building Cortana speakers at really? this point. Well, any, any new ones anymore. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a dead item. But Alexa is huge, and Alexa doesn't right. really have a home on the desktop. Alexa doesn't have a... Um, app. You can yeah. get it through the web. You, and stuff well, and like you, that, you yeah. can get it on your phone, but it doesn't have a really convenient integration with PCs. So for Microsoft to step up and say, hey, you know what? Alexa is our integration into the home. But another way to think That's of it really is That's really good. Um, Cortana is on 700 million devices. Alexa is on what, like 20 million? Something but it's like that. It's just different categories. I know, of it's devices. a different category. But, but, but I think people don't realize that. Like they're like, oh, Alexa, Alexa, Alexa. But you know what? There's 10 times as many Cortana devices. Because it's every Windows PC. Yeah. Let's take another question. OK, great. So the Windows 10 October update. Your phone. Uh, with my phone, apparently. Your phone. It'll give everyone my phone. Your phone. My phone, right? <laughs> no, it's yeah. called your phone. I know, I know. <laughs> um, so the Windows 10 October update, when will you get it? How do you get it? Um, if you just go to Windows Update in the settings here, um, it will, when it's ready for you, it will appear here. And you just hit Windows Update, check for new updates. Ah, uh, restart required. So I will check when I, I get to back restart. to my desk. Oh, this is probably that update. But anyway, yeah, you, you just hit check for updates. And I wouldn't try to force, obviously, like, I wouldn't try to force the, the, um, the update at this point, like by getting an ISO mm -hmm. or anything like that. I would just wait for Microsoft to make sure your hardware is okay for it. Okay, great. I'll check when I get back to my desk. Uh, thank you all for watching. This has been One Cool Thing with PCMag.com. If you're watching live on Facebook, then uh, we will be back at 10 a.m. tomorrow with another live discussion with you, our most excellent uh, viewers, readers, listeners, watchers. If you're watching on YouTube, consider coming over to Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern on weekdays to participate in the discussion. Like and subscribe. We have a new One Cool Thing every day. We'll see you again soon.